Well, today we're going to take a peek at a nice accessory for your home theater setup. In this case, we're going to actually do a full unboxing as well as setup video on this. This is the Sofa Baton X1 Smart Remote Control, completely wires, Bluetooth with its own IR blasting hub. And we're going to do a full setup right now. Okay, here we have the SofaCon package. I'm gonna go ahead and open up. Now, if this audio sounds a little weird, it's because for some reason the audio didn't record when I took the video, so I'm just uh, dubbing over this. But uh, plastic wrapped off. And as we pull open the package, well, first we uh, have the manual, which obviously we'll go through. Then we actually have the remote itself. Now the remote, it does have a nice click wheel right there in the, in the center there, so you can kind of select your activity. It's not a touch screen, so you just have the click wheel. Um, so that is something, but uh, uh, also it is charged, you can see in the package, and it is a USB-C on the bottom for charging. Then we have a nice little uh, card here that just kind of gives us uh, basic settings, um, how to start essentially. We have uh, some IR blasters, um, one two-way blaster, and then a third single, so um, up to three device can, it appears, can actually be controlled by this hub. These are just two USB-C cables, USB-A to USB-C. One for the hub, and that's essentially to power the hub. The other one to actually charge up the remote. And then we actually have the charging brick, just USB-A uh, USB for, for essentially for the hub, to power the hub. So here we have the hub. We'll take that out of the packaging. So yeah, with the hub here itself, on the back we have a USB, well, t actually there's on the all far left we have a button there. I think that's actually the sync button or the you know, basically connect via Bluetooth. Then we have the USB-C port for powering the hub. And then the two 3.5 millimeter ports for the IR blasting cables that came with it. And so depending on your setup, you may, you know, you may need one or both ports, uh, depending on what you're using it for. In our case, uh, we will be using a single IR blaster, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and take a peek at the manual real quick, and then uh, we'll continue the setup as we go. So our quick setup card, set up new hub, add devices in the app, create new activity. We're essentially gonna do those steps. Um, so I'm gonna start by taking the hub and taking the power cord. I do have it plugged into an outlet down here, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug it into power. Do have some lights going on at the bottom there. You can kind of see blue light right now. Let that sit there. And then we'll have the remote. The remote, obviously, like I said, has came with power. It looks like it's about three quarter charge, so that's pretty solid. I do have one IR blaster. I'm gonna go ahead and actually plug that in right now into port one on the back here. And that's actually what I'm gonna uh, connect to a dead end receiver. So that's to start. If I need the more IR blasters as I go, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, I did download the app. That's actually the next start uh, in the actual book here. They have a QR code for you to scan to find the app in the App Store or the Google Play Store. So I have that. Let's start with the app. Okay, so this is where the app is here in the App Store. I'm gonna go ahead and hit open on that. Now we can log in, which if you already have an account, I do not. You can register an account with your own email. You can sign in with Google or you can sign in with Apple. So I'm gonna uh, sign up real quick. I'll be right back. Okay, so we are now signed up and Sofa Baton does have two different models. They have the U1, which is uh, basically an infrared only remote, and then the X1 that has that Bluetooth capability uh, so you don't have to see the devices to control them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do X1 here, which is the one we're actually setting up. We're gonna go ahead and set up a new hub because we haven't set one up yet. Connect to the hub to the power outlet. We've already done that. Press and hold the button on the X hub for three seconds. All right, so I have the X hub right here. So I'm gonna do that. One, two, three, and let go. Did start blinking, now we have a blue light blinking. Blue light of the hub is blinking. Okay, I'm gonna hit that checkbox, hit next, hit okay to use my Bluetooth connections to look for the hub. There's the Sofa Baton X1, so it did locate the hub. Now we get to connect it to our Wi-Fi. I'm gonna actually connect it to my standard one. I'm gonna put in my password, I'll be right back. Confirm that it's connected to my Wi-Fi. So now we're just gonna let it do its thing. I'll be right back. Okay, that literally took two seconds. Hit done. Like to connect to devices on your network, I'm gonna hit allow. Uh, 
update, follow it. Okay, so that's confirm. Sending the X100 via Wi Fi. So once it connects via Wi Fi, or maybe it actually found it, maybe that's it right there. Device information, X1 Hub. I'm fine with that right now. Okay, I guess I was just interested. So in devices, it's actually looking for devices to, for it to control. Um, so if we hit the plus button, we're actually going to do a Denon receiver, which I don't have it uh, by it yet. Okay, so I spelled it right. Denon AVRS960H, that's the receiver that I currently am operating. So I'm going to hit search. Icon. Let's change the icon to a receiver. <laughs> so I'll go with that. That's fine for now. Hit complete. I'm going to call it Denon. That's fine. Code base is downloading. Keep your phone on Wi-Fi Connect. So I'm going to go ahead and let it download and get its uh, stuff over to it. And we'll come back. Okay, it took a few minutes for it to do its whole thing. And then I backed back, came, you basically backed back out. So now you can see the devices that we have in here is Denon, which I added, right? I'm going to go ahead and see about adding something else. So I'm going to see about adding the Apple TV and we're going to use Bluetooth, not infrared on this one. And on this one, we're going to use, eh, there's the Apple symbol. Jeez, I didn't even see it. Hit complete. So I'll let it add that one. This one doesn't look like it's going to take as long, but we'll give it a few minutes to do its thing. So now it's actually asking me to use the original Blue, uh, Apple TV remote to pair this new remote to the Apple TV, which I will have to do. I'm going to have to move everything over to there. So I'm going to go ahead and actually just move this whole scenario over to my home theater so we can finish this setup. I'm going to try to show this best. So this is my Denon AVR 960 receiver. So there is an infrared port on this guy and every single receiver is going to be a little bit different, but I decided to show you this in, if you go in the manual, it'll probably show you where the receiver is. But if I actually take this front piece off, you can actually see Right there is the actual, ooh, I don't even know what I'm doing here. Uh, that's where the actual uh, infrared receiver is. So if we actually line that up, it's actually right here, um, which is where it's supposed to be, right in the middle of that. So what I want to do for this specific uh, circumstance is take my IR blaster, and it has double-sided tape, and we're going to stick it right on there just like so. So... I'm going to go ahead and take that off. Sound? Yeah, we'll set it up for like that for now. We'll see if it works. If I have to change it, I'll change it. I apologize for that. And uh, I'm just going to get it plugged in back here. And then we'll be set. The other nice thing I wanted to point out is I do have 5 volt uh, off the front of my receiver. And I'm not using it for anything else. So I'm actually going to power my hub. Uh, from the front of the receiver itself actually, which is nice. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a try rather than using The actual brick that it came with so I can actually use this for charging the remote if I wanted to Okay, I apologize for that a little bit, but uh, now we're back to here So uh, now that I'm back in the app you can see that it already it didn't even we didn't finish pairing it But if we actually go back into Apple, so even though it shows everything here if hit edit Bluetooth repairing because we haven't paired it yet. So, or if we, if you were to change Apple TV devices, hit enable Bluetooth uh, enable pairing, and then we'll go onto the Bluetooth uh, the Apple TV itself to do the rest. Okay, so on my Apple TV, if I go to settings, uh, remotes and devices, uh, Bluetooth is where I should do this, and there it is. There's the Sopaton 217E, I guess. So we're going to go ahead and click on that, and now it should actually work with that so i'm going to back back out on the app let's just yeah now i'm doing it with the app oh i hit home that's fine i wonder if i go on the actual devices uh, i haven't actually paired this remote actually to it yet so now we're good on uh the app for the apple tv now it's all about getting this remote up and going because right now it's not connected currently. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the set and sync. And now it should be synchronizing with the hub, I would assume. And we're going to go ahead and just let it do its thing and come back to it shortly. Oh, 50%. So it's actually syncing faster than I thought it was going to. I thought, all right. Yeah. So there we go. It actually synced. So Denon and Apple. So let's see the Apple. I know for sure I'm standing in front of, I can actually see if that's actually working. So yes, uh, it is connecting to that. Oh yeah, heck yeah, it's working. Uh, I'll show you that here in a second. 
So now if I'm on here, um, with the click wheel, I can select Apple and it'll go green. Oh, look at that, that's weird. Um, but you can see that now I actually have control with this remote of all of the Apple stuff. The HDMI uh, audio buttons are working. Uh, everything appears to be working. So, um, yeah, that's pretty awesome. On the controller itself, on the top right, there's a back button. So you can always go back to the device and then I can scroll up to Denon, click on that, click on Denon again. And it'll, uh, I don't know what the, the zero, one, two, three, four, I don't know if you see that here. I'll zoom in on here in a minute. But it is also working, so mute, mute's on. If I go home, hit the home button, or here, menu button. Yep, I can go through and actually control. So even with sticking on the front of that box, the infrared is working just fine. And so I can actually go through the setup. So the remote control is now fully set up. It is fully operational. Pretty awesome. So this is what I was talking about. So we can obviously select. And so if I go into the Denon submenu and I click, I push on the ball here. Um, I just saw the zero one. I was like, what's going on? Well, that's the, all the keys that are on the physical remote. So one, two, three, four, five, then there power play arrow. And you can just keep scrolling through all of the settings. So if you need to get to something specific, it's all right here. Pretty awesome actually. So you can see down here below everything, we have our directional pad and then a bunch of keys down here. And maybe you want this to be something specific that it is not programmed to right now, um, or maybe it's just not programmed at all. And you wanna do whatever you wanna do. That is something you set up in the app. So we're back in the app and I'm gonna go ahead and choose Denon. I'm gonna go to the receiver and it's gonna bring up, well, what you're gonna see on the bottom part of the remote of the, con the controls that you can mess around with. Well. This is where we can do some editing. So if we hit edit at the top, we can assign a key for the X1 remote. So the X1 remote is the physical remote that I have in my hand over here. So I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna show you the actual keys that we can assign. They're all highlighted yellow. So there is quite a few of those keys that we can actually assign ourselves. So like for instance, the plus button, I'm gonna come in here and actually program that to be volume up. Assume it's down here. Yep, volume up is down here. So I'm gonna select that. Now I'm gonna select the minus because it's, I guess the yellow is, it hasn't been programmed yet. So we'll do that as volume down. Perfect. Now we have the volume up and down selected and we can choose whatever we want. You can obviously go through all of these and choose whatever you want them to be. Um, so that's pretty awesome. So if you actually see buttons that are great, that don't have a yellow circle, that means they are programmed. But if you still push on that button, so for instance, the mute button in the center, if I click on it, it'll still come up and allow me to do it and it'll select to show me what it currently is assigned to and that's mute. And I'm gonna leave it at that, so I'm gonna hit back. But even though the yellow circle is there, is not there, does not mean you can't program it. You can program whatever key you want to do whatever you want within this specific uh, circumstance. So pretty cool in that regard. And, and you'll actually see that when you back back out to the, the remote that you have here, now the, the program keys that we just programmed are now highlighted. The ones that are grayed out that I don't do anything, that's the ones down here, and I haven't programmed these. But the rest of these are all fully programmed, ready to go. Um, and you can use them either on the phone or on the, the X1 remote. Both of them work. So, because it goes over Wi-Fi, the remote here will work and it'll control anything. Pretty cool, actually, in all reality, that you do have a choice. You can just get your phone out and use your phone if you so desire. I personally prefer a physical remote, um, but I do have that option. That's pretty nice. So, like, if my remote got lost, I can still grab my phone. Okay, so now that we've set up devices, and we're good on the device set age, now we're actually going to create what's called an activity. And an activity essentially is like watch a movie, it'll set, turn this device on, set everything to this input on the receiver and whatever, right? Uh, and so we can actually control that with activities. So for instance, we're gonna hit plus here. We're gonna choose the devices for that activity, Denon and Apple. We're gonna hit next. On the Denon input source is gonna be input media player, which um, you may have to go through this setup procedure where you actually hit select sources with one click. Some devices you actually have to go, you know, hit this button three times. And so this will tell you what ones. On my specific receiver, at least on the factory remote even, you can choose a direct input. Um, and then from there, uh, you can choose which one you want to do. Hit add. Mine is input media player. I already went through this setup just to understand it a little bit. So you can see mine is called input media player. I'm going to hit complete. Uh, so that's what mine is. Hit back. Let's see here. 
back. So input media player hit next. Um, so that's the settings. So let's go to when we turn things on. So setting on the on on and off button. Power on. Um, actually, to be honest, it should power on automatically with the Apple TV. So on this case, I'm going to actually hit back and go to the Apple TV settings because it's actually controlling the receiver in this regard. Every single set setup is going to be a little bit different. In this case, when I hit the Apple TV remote right now, it's set to control the receiver, turn the receiver on, and the, actually the projector on. So I actually have to only worry about power on and off settings with the Apple TV. So power on, command to power on, uh, instruction key should just be home page key. So that'll, if I hit the home page key, it will wake the Apple TV up. I don't have to do a long press. I hit confirm. That's our power on home page done. Power off. This is a little bit trickier because the Apple TV, at least the older Apple TV remotes didn't have a power button. The newer ones just do have a power button. You just have to long press it. But on mine, I have the older, on this specific Apple TV, the old uh, Apple TV 4K for, uh, first and second gen, right? Uh, or maybe it's first gen only. Um, power off button, hit command key. On this case, we have to do the home page button and it's gonna be like three seconds. So three seconds, hit confirm. After you push and hold the home key button for three seconds, then you hit on the same item, you just hit the enter button. Let's see what it's called on here. Okay, I guess this is probably what it's called. Doesn't need to be a long press on that, but that's just selecting sleep from the menu and hit confirm and hit complete. Now I can actually change the settings probably. Right now make sure all devices are power on. Everything is currently turned on. All devices are power on. Hit okay. <clears throat> Which device do you want the volume keys? Denon's gonna be the volume. I'm okay with that. Hit next. Which device the input keys? I'm gonna hit Apple because that's gonna be my Apple TV. That's what I'm gonna be controlling. Hit next. Uh, and this is gonna be called Watch uh, Apple TV, and we're going to put that into an Apple, hit complete. <clears throat> Lots of stuff going on upstairs in my house right now. And then that's going to save its thing. And then after we, after it saves, um, we can obviously test it on here, um, or we can actually do it on the remote. I'm going to do it on the remote instead, and we're going to synchronize that. So I actually woke up the remote, it was automatically synchronizing. So obviously it noticed that there was some stuff updating. So I'm gonna let it synchronize, which shouldn't take more than a few seconds here. Let it do its thing. And then I'm gonna get the control or the camera pointed up. So right now, I right now I don't know if you can read this, it's just a, I'm on, let me back out here, on the main page on the here, I'm gonna choose activities <clears throat> and hit app, watch Apple TV. It's already on. Um, but it's gonna do its watch Apple TV thing, get in the, the proper settings. And then on here, I'm gonna hit the off button, which is the top left. Let's make sure it actually does what it's supposed to do, turning off, brings that up, should hit sleep. And yes, my projector is turned off. Obviously the Apple TV probably, I would assume the Apple TV turned off and the, the uh, receiver is turned off. I'm gonna go double check, I'll be right back. So yes, it did work exactly like it was supposed to. Everything is turned off. And I gave the projector a couple minutes to cool down. I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, if I back back out again, I'll show you again. Activities, click, select that, select watch Apple TV. You can see the little green bar doing its thing. Projector is turning on. Let's make sure it actually gets over to the Apple TV after it does its full setup, setting, setup here. Does its automatic focusing. Should automatically switch over to the Apple TV uh, and receiver once it connects. That's the uh, projector checking HDMI one input. It might take a second. We'll give it a minute. Okay, so everything was on. The receiver was set to the wrong input, so I must not have set that up right. Let's go back to the app. Let's check that. All right, the one good thing about something not working is you get to have more hands on with the app and figure things out. So watch Apple TV, we're in the, we're in the activity section again. All right, so here it is, we're, let's hit edit. Let's look at startup settings. And maybe I have to put a delay in there. 
um, Apple turn off when not in use. I'm going to add in a command, startup procedures, device, Apple, command is home page, confirm. I'm going to stick that in here so it starts booting up everything. And then I'm going to actually, I'm going to add in a delay. Go back. Let's do a two second delay. Actually, I could probably two and a half just to give it a little bit of time. And push that up. And then we have source on the Denon input media player. That should be last. So hit save. And then uh, I'm going to shut down and we'll try it again. Got my remote. Select watch Apple TV. Let's let it do its thing. As it boots up and focuses. And we should select over to HDMI. And there we are. Perfect. So it took a few extra seconds. The last first time I tested it, it kind of went over right away, but I don't know why it sometimes takes a little longer. But as long as it gets to where it's supposed to go. So that's something you might have to mess around with because in this case my projector was obviously taking over as TV audio. And I had to uh, mess around with adding a delay to, to select this specific input. But of course if you started, uh, if I started touching the Apple TV remotes, like if I was going to my remote and actually started messing around with it and, create, and telling the amplifier, no, 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 I need to be on this input, it should automatically cycle over to it. But that is the full setup of the... Uh, Silver Baton X1 remote. Last test. Off button. If I click the off button, boom, and click. So as of so far, um, I'm actually highly liking this remote. Um, I like its simplicity. Uh, it's a, It's got a decent weight to it, but it's not crazy heavy at all. Uh, USB-C, great that they integrated that to make it uh, easier to get chargers and stuff for this guy, because you're gonna have a USB-C charging cord laying around anyway. Um, so pretty awesome. Um, I do the hub setup and basically the, the app that you use to set it up is fairly intuitive. Um, I'm sure that they could do some updates to make it better. I'm not saying that there isn't. And then this is not a full, obviously, review on this product. This is more just a setup video because after the next week or two, um, me actually testing this out, both the app side as well as the remote side, I'll have more to say. That's going to be on my Tech Gooch channel. That's coming soon. So first of all, Sova uh, I'm not. I'm kind of impressed by it. Um, 189 bucks is what they're going for. You can typically find a coupon uh, where you can maybe hopefully get it for a little bit less. Um, but watch the deals from here all the way to the end of the year. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, but yeah, that's the Sova X1. So far, I like it. Um, I do, and in specifically in my instance, because I'm hiding my rece my receiver, so I cannot use the factory remote that came with it because it's infrared only. I can't even use it. So it was either doing something like this with a programmable remote or with just an IR blaster uh, repeater, um, and that didn't really appeal to me. I didn't want a little box sitting in my room that I had to point my remote at. I'd rather do something that's completely wireless and then adds in the function of doing so, uh, programmable macro keys and controlling all of my devices. So pretty awesome. So put on X1, check it out. I will post a link where you can actually check this out on Amazon as well as if uh, I'll put a link directly to their website if you want to take a peek at it there. So thanks for again for watching here all the way to the end. We'll have more setup in uh, install installation videos coming up specifically with that home theater. I'm going to do probably some more. So Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll catch you back here on, well, on GeekSmart for more setup videos and installs. Otherwise, check us over on TechGooch for the reviews of said products, and we'll see you again here real soon. Thanks for watching.